I'd like to remind everyone to turn off their cell phones, uh, not just silence them, but actually turn them off so it doesn't interfere with any of the television RF feeds. And then if everyone could stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I like the strong voices know, in the front row. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell they hear that once in a while. <laughs> okay, uh, is it the first order of business if we can take roll? Absolutely. <coughs> President Branstad. Absent. Vice President Singer. Here. Treasurer Wasserman. Here. Member Baker. Here. Member Frazee. Here. Member Gordon. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. All right, if we will move into our consent agenda, we have um, four items. We have the approval of the meeting minutes from April. We also have four resignations. We have approvement of the payment of the school system bills for the month of March and some small legal invoices um, for April. I move approval of the consent agenda, mm -hmm. items 2.1 through 2.4. I think that's the lowest legal bill I have seen in 12 Absolutely. years on the board. <laughs> Only one, and we could probably take that out of our pocket. Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay, if there's no other comments, then we'll move in to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now I'd like to turn this over to Mr. Carroll for uh, some very important awards tonight. We have three presentations and I'm going to uh, actually turn this over to some other folks tonight. We have with us tonight Travis Van Tien. Travis, did I say it right? Okay. <laughs> from Set from Setsag. And along with him we have um, Ruth Coppins from MASD. The floor is yours. We'll bring you over to the mic though if you guys can. A little bit about what we're here to do next. Um, it's one of my favorite things that I do all year. It's amazing that we have all these great programs in the state of Michigan. Um, a lot of times you hear about maybe the not so fun things that go on at schools, negotiations, all the active shooter scenarios, and we rarely spend time to focus on the kids, the teachers, the people, all the amazing programs that go on. So with, in collaboration with the, the Association of School Boards, 22 years ago we, we developed the Educate Nexus program. Um, it started out a little bit smaller scale. This year, in our 22nd year of the association, we're gonna take that time to bring a grassroots program that we've seen go on. A lot of things we've been learning on the street, but also still trying to reach out to our students. Um, in the past we've had luncheons, we've had different ways to celebrate, I think it started out with a hundred dollar payment for each school district and this year it is our pleasure to pass along a check to help grow the program of twenty five hundred dollars um, along with that it's a sign we'll be passing along a sign that everyone's familiar with you guys have all seen the sign you have multiple hanging here at midland so you should be incredibly <laughs> proud of that and i guess the stars of this show um, i'd like to introduce um, from our program Lisa Bernardo, Kara Hecklett, and Pam Castle with Winston. While they're coming up, I'd like to say congratulations to all of you for and your superintendent and your principal, along with the board, for allowing these ladies to do this program for the kids. That's what it's all about, and 
we need to do more of that. We need to toot our horn a little louder. I go to these national conferences and I hear all the awards that people get for things. I'm thinking, we did that. We did that. You know, we just need to back up and take time and give ourselves a little more credit. You know, it's, it seems like it's self-indulgent, but no, it really isn't. <laughs> we should do that. Uh, that would help maybe to counteract all the negativity that we see about schools, because we know that's not really true. We all know that. So thank you and congratulations again. And for their, I'm going to ha hand over the actual check. I, I advise them not to send it all in one place. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for 20 times, congratulations, and thank you for your inspiration, your passion for teaching these kids. You know, I might add, um, three years ago, I, I whispered to Pam one day, I said, we got to have some programs that qualify for this. And Pam must have took this seriously because this is the third three time years. she's got to stand on the stage with a winner. So three years in a row, um, very good Dow High School to keep winning those awards. So, Do you want to comment? Yeah. Would anyone Does, like are the teachers like to comment about your program? <laughs> <laughs> Take the check and run. <laughs> about it and they do it all in the Spanish language. Um, and then Sarah does this with her IB World Lit One classes and um, they do their blogs and all that kind of stuff um, with their classes Is too. Is a thinker, a communicator, a reflector, a inquirer, all of those yeah. are things. All so the, the IB yeah. learning profile, it all really um, follow, falls in with that really well. And um, it just gives the kids an opportunity to, um, they get one day a week to um, choose what it is they want to learn about. And, um, and then to, to take that and, um, and just develop it and make it something that is their own. It's just really, really unique to see what each kid does with, with the project, so. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, are there any projects you can tell us about that come to mind? <laughs> oh, we well, how much time do we have? Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're all very different. Um, I, have a, I have two students who um, decided they want to spend their time building a drone, so they're, they're almost done with it. Um, I have students who take on new musical instruments, who experiment with art, um, who try to learn a new language, learn how to cook because they're worried that when they go to college they won't be able to cook. Um, there are um, a lot of community service oriented ones where they are doing things to help um, the community or going around trying to figure out how what community service they want to be involved in. Yeah, or where the needs are. We have, we have a student in both of our classes that's trying to figure out where are the needs in our community and, and how they can get involved. I have some students doing photography, um, one with a bent on really trying to get people to see the beauty in the environment and how we might be able to help the environment. Um, I have another student working on renewable energy and how to bring that home to Midland and get people to um, take charge of that. I have a kid building a bench alongside and a garden alongside of the rail trail. Um, I have students designing apps, that's our selling. Yep. Um, <laughs> I have, wow. what have I had? I've had one student who tried to sell no soliciting signs door to door. Um, <laughs> <laughs> doing stock market projects they want to do. I mean, just dabbling it. You, you name it, they've tried it yeah. or maybe failed at it and started something new. Yeah. One kid wanted to do a backflip. He did it in the first day and then had to think about what else he was going to do. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a bunch of different. Yeah, one of, one of the really neat things is that kids, you know, they, they set a goal. We work with them to kind of set a smart goal with it. And a lot of times they fail. And it's really good for them to learn through that process of failing that even though they failed at reaching the goal, they can still look at their learning journey <coughs> and see how much they have grown and learned through that process. So that's kind of one of the keys about it is that it, it, it's okay to fail. And kids, especially in Midland, they kind of freak out a little bit about failing. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's a really good learning opportunity for them, so. Excellent. Wow. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Is this 20% of each class time they do this? 
No, it's um, the, the way we do it is um, they get 20% of the class week. So, okay. um, like, we have, okay. yeah, we oh, okay. do Miracles Magico, so it's, you know, on Wednesdays is when oh, we okay. do it, and I that's see. their day to, to use to vlog or, you know, practice. <coughs> I had a kid learn how to juggle last year, so it just <laughs> depends. Oh. Yeah, so. Very good. Well, thank you for sharing with yeah. us. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Congratulations. <laughs>
To share some of the learning and examples of the positive changes that have occurred in the building, several students at Siebert were interviewed and will share their PYP experiences in the following video. about needs and wants when I was a thinker. In the video that I watched um, that they needed something to keep warm with and they got to pick between candy, water, and a tent. I know what they picked. They picked a tent. Why did they pick a tent? Because that keep some warm. Candy doesn't. That keep candy doesn't keep them healthy, does it? It candy doesn't have keep them healthy. So. so you were definitely a thinker, weren't you? Yep. I am a caring person. Do you know how to care about our planet Earth? Taking care of an Earth is a big responsibility. You had to pick up litter. Yeah, you had to be careful of not dropping litter on the floor instead of the trash can, and you can and you throwing things in the water. One, if you want to plant Earth to be nice and clean and brand new, then you should start picking up litter and take care of other responsibilities. So we were seeing if we could sprout some seeds in things that weren't just soil. We were trying to sprout them in different things about like sand and hand sanitizer and um, other stuff. The hand sanitizer wasn't really growing. So we had choices, but it, the hand sanitizer wouldn't really grow. So we, I like when we have choice more. It's when we did the water cycle. When we did an experiment where we put water in a bag and we taped it to a window where the sun would show and we saw that made a cloud. See there was a cloud there because it had the condensation on the edge of the bag. Uh, let my group and I brainstorm some ideas. We can help save natural resources. Uh, for example, turn off the water. We brainstorm. It saves water and money because you like you guys have water bills. And we sure do. <laughs> <laughs> and. We brainstorm a couple more things about more ideas. Like she would give us an idea, and we'd have to like brains. We would have a couple of minutes to brainstorm some things. Did you think about why it was important to save natural resources? It's important because we'll need it in the future, or else, um, for example, how are we going to get water, or else, like we won't survive. <laughs> Thank you. Let, before is, uh, we did, we learned about the water cycle and we learned that it was really important. So here are some of the things that we did. So we made these posters about some water problems in our homes and other places. And then we started to notice how Flint um, had water in their lab lead in their water. So with our pen pals, we raised money to buy water bottles for Flint and we raised books because the teachers had to buy all the supplies for school and the kids only brought their backpack. One of our units was for 
talking about people who are striving for justice and equality. And we learned about Rosa Parks. And I think she was a risk taker because she got all these threatening calls from home when she was doing something really important for our people. What was important to Rosa Parks? What was important to her was a lot of the African Americans weren't getting what they deserved. They weren't getting right treatment because they should be equal. Like they should have, they should be able to sit wherever they want to, or they should go wherever they want to. It doesn't matter if they're about their background or anything. So, like the learner profile is the makes students be better. It makes you think about what you're doing. And yeah. So, like carrying principal communication. That's all learner examples. Yeah. And all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you know you can work that into like group work, so yeah. doing a lot more group work with it. Yeah. So that you gotta be principal of caring. Yeah, and you have to be able to communicate with others. Mm -hmm. yeah. Think about the stuff, whatever you're doing more. <laughs> now you're talking sure. about group work more and collaboration more. Mm -hmm. What do you like about doing those sort of collaborative thinking projects? Well, like, you have to be able to work with other people like you will be in the future. Yeah. So, like, in the future with jobs, you'll have to be able to work with people maybe if you even don't like them then you have to be able to work with them and you can think okay how can I maybe like them a little more maybe help them out so that they're doing their job or something like that and then you think yeah okay what learner profiles help them or me do this Okay, so then when we think about learner profile connecting between different subjects, in writing we try to apply like the learner profile traits to the characters we write about, and then when we read we try to think how are they being like maybe a risk taker, or how are they being principled, or something. Yeah, like and like then that. you can apply that to your own writing. Yeah. Okay, so this character is being like maybe caring, a risk taker, like the we'll say, okay, how can I apply this to my own writing? With the identity project too. Like what makes you yeah, kind of what you what are. makes you you, and then you can say, okay, maybe I want my character to have something that I I mm. have. Yeah, so maybe I'm like with the like, character traits, like I'm ready. Yeah. So maybe what like is, I'm really caring. I want my character to be caring, guys, caring, principal. Can you tell me how you use the learner profile in everyday learning and in the classroom or outside of the classroom? Well, sometimes when we have like discussions, we think. How do you, how are you being maybe like a learner profile trait? And you might think, oh, I'm doing this to be that trait. And if not, how can you be, what can you do to make sure you're being that trait? Yeah, and it helps us like we set goals for ourselves. So if we're not being this learner profile, maybe we can like say, okay, my goal is to yeah. be like this by the end of Look with empathy too, like it kind of all into, like outside at recess and stuff like that. If you see somebody getting bullied, mm -hmm. think about that more. Okay, I have empathy. Yeah, so like bystanders. Yeah, yeah, so it goes into bullying too, like the empathy. So if you see somebody or can bully a principal, yeah. So mm -hmm. like you know what to do in that situation. What's one goal you set for yourself this year with one of the learner profiles? Right. Oh, because you're um, actually, like standing I, up for other people who are like having more empathy. I just don't yeah. Remember. I remember I set a goal to have more enthusiasm towards learning some different subjects, like math. Yeah, that was, that was me too. Yeah. let us like explore more than just giving us our answers and telling us so do this do this do this they like say here are your materials then just figure out a way to build it and they don't give us like they give us instructionals and we have to like collaborate in our groups and it's a lot funner than having your teacher just do it in the front of the classroom through the document camera Excellent.
excellent. So can you give me an example of a time that you did that? Well, we've been making circuits, and she just told us we need to get a few wires, a battery holder, battery, and a light bulb, and build it ourselves. And it was pretty fun, because we got to see how much it lit, and then people started adding like, more batteries to make the light bulb go brighter and brighter, and it was really enjoyable. This was exciting to see. Thanks for, for playing that video. It's nice to see the, the, the young ones, they get the broad concepts, which is really cool. I mean, yes. they're talking about being thinkers and being caring people and, and managing resources at that level for the globe. And then they get older and they're talking about empathy, enthusiasm, exploration, and they're using those words in a context that shows they understand what it means, and that's really exciting. It has been very exciting to see. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your work. Good evening. My name is Jen Service, and I am the PYP coordinator at both Eastlawn and Carpenter Elementary Schools. Uh, we are also in our consultancy year, year two of the primary years program at Eastlawn. Teachers and students have been working very hard this year on writing their units of inquiry and we embra have embraced the heart of the program through the integration of the learner profile in all that we do. One component of the essential elements in the PYP is taking action. We have many great examples of action that have taken place this year at Eastlawn, and I have brought with me tonight a few students that would like to share their authentic action with you. So first off, I would like to introduce to you fifth graders, Miss Elena Benaway and Miss Olivia Gratson. Hi, I'm Olivia. And I'm Elena. As fifth graders at Eastlawn, we have been helping Miss Dooley in the library all year. Our library duties consist of shelving books, organizing maker spaces in our library. Oh, for our library, we quickly began to notice that many of our favorite books in our library were starting to get damaged. Mm. They were checked out so often that many of them were beginning to fall apart. We also noticed that there are some empty shelves in our library. We recognize that as fifth grade leavers, we have a responsibility to the students of the East Long community and the larger community of Midland. To take care of our library, our books, and our school. We love reading and we want to share our love of books with others. We want, the, we want books in the hands of all kids all ages, so we decided to take action and organize a book drive. Before, we shared our idea with Ms. Blazy and Ms. Dewey. We reflected a little bit more on our purpose. We know that there are many children that do not have the same opportunities as we do. Literacy is so important, and we wanted to share our message of literacy with others. We know that there are some books, there are some schools that are not as fortunate as us. We know that preschools also need, also have a need for books, along with disadvantaged and disabled students. If we organize a book drive, not only can we collect new books for our library, but we can also share books with our community. After we carefully thought through our plan, we were risk takers and took our idea to Ms. Blazy, Ms. Dooley, Ms. Hoppel, and Ms. Peterson. We shared with them our reason for wanting to organize this drive. Our book drive ran from April 19th to May 13th, and we collected well over 300 new and gently used books. We have become very knowledgeable about the library process and what it takes to get new books into our libraries. 
We looked through each and every book that was donated to our school and separated the books into categories. We have a good deal of books that we are planning to send to Longview Preschool and the Salvation Army. We have many books that will be shared with fellow students of Eastland. We have some books that, are be that we are planning to donate to Jefferson and Northeast. <coughs> we hope that our love for books and reading fills the shelves of many schools as well as the hearts of kids in Midland. It feels good to do something for others. We would like to thank everyone that has been involved in our action. We hope that, there, that this small act will help all students to get a better education. Reading is so important and we want everyone to have access to quality books. Thank you. <laughs> wow. around the school and every day we check on them to make sure and see how well kids are um, like in <coughs> with it and we collect the books and then we take it to our library to check on them for damages and um, like names like we cross out the names and stuff like that. Um, that's some of our books. We have a well, lot more. They were very categorized there. Um, yeah, we're organizing, like we're checking on them, making sure there's no like ripped pages, damaged, uh, yeah. any damage. And we have to go through and cross out the names of people and checks or no pages bent or writing all over it, and then we have to categorize things. And that's just us, it's not a bunch of us. <laughs> <laughs> presentation that was done very 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 well, well um, thank you, <laughs> you know, just doing some simple mental math you folks were generating about 10 books a day mm -hmm. in, in that's incredible yeah. amount of work yeah just congratulations on everything and an excellent presentation i can't mm -hmm. say it enough thank you awesome job guys thank you very much thank you. Thank you, ladies. And next, I would like to introduce third grader, Miss McKenna Herkel. She has a very important message to share through her action. Hi, my name is McKenna. I have a very important message to share about bullying. I was a victim of bullying about a year ago. It was a very hurtful experience. I wasn't sure how to deal with it. In our PYP unit, who we are, I learned the importance of being a responsible citizen and doing what is right. I know I had to share my message because I wasn't alone. Many people are victims of bullying and I needed to do something about it. I needed to communicate my message to others to take a risk to speak up. I shared my idea with my friends, my teacher, Miss Blasey, Miss Lamont, Miss Carly, and Mr. Shannon. I was confident and I decided to take action. Please watch and listen closely to my video and my message.
is important to share the various perspectives of bullying so that people can see the different sides and how it affects everyone involved. I hope that by creating this video and taking a stand, taking action, that will inspire others to speak up. I plan to share my message with all of the students at East Lawn Elementary by visiting their classrooms and sharing my video and my message. You need to take action. Mm. Remember, if you see something, say something. We need to work together to be responsible citizens to create a better and more peaceful world. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? McKenna, I think you're brilliant. Yes, <laughs> that was and wonderfully brave. done. Very brave. And yeah. your yep. message is incredible, and I think can transcend through our entire district, not just the school. Well, well done. Thank you. And I would tell you, young lady, don't worry about the bullies. <laughs> You've got it all over us. <laughs> and don't worry, you're going to be fine. And I'd say you're, you're, a, you're very brave, McKenna, and you're a very good actress in your video, too. Very good a to great speaker. You've got a great story to tell. Thank you. Good job. Thank good job. Good. And thank you for having us tonight. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, we have three items. Our first, 4.1, uh, we have approval of the Midland County ESA uh, budget. Mr. Chair, would you like to discuss? So our second year in a row that we've done a little different format than you've had in the past. And um, we used to have the ESA come present in a short time for you. Instead of that uh, sufficing, we now send our business officials to ESA and the four county schools review the budget that they're proposing in front of you and um, they come back and make a recommendation. Mr. Trevor came back and did that in our FFO committee um, a week or so ago and made that recommendation that they're here looking for approval of the ESA budget for the 2016-17 school year. Um, we think they've done um, some growth in, in the areas of controlling their costs as we move forward. So we're comfortable with it at this time. I and move. Remote, I move approval of 4.1. Okay. And, um, is there any discussion? Any major highlights, Monica or Bob? Any Excuse any me? major highlight that you're concerned about? Uh, no. I, I mean, in general, they're facing the same situation we are. They're looking for ways to control costs. I think they've listened to all the the um, county boards, if you will. We relayed the same message, and I think. They're doing the same thing. They're analyzing their uh, material, uh, all their costs, I would say, for what they control and what they don't. Mm -hmm. uh, just like us, there are some things that uh, you know, are controlled by other sources that they can't change that revenue or they can't change that expense uh, because of the way the money funnels through them. So I think they've made good efforts. They listened to us. I, I think we're They're still well. slightly in deficit spending, so, but they, they're still have enough fund balance to do so, but that, that's their effort to get out of it. So get out of it. Okay. And did it pretty much align with the, our budget expectations? Yeah, we, you know, we've spent significant time um, looking at the special education side of their mm -hmm. budget, um, two different silos there and through the time because that one affects us the most. And so um, we, we, it's a work in progress, but we've, um, I would say we've made great growth over the last few years with them on our special education side ongoing growth area and so we wish it wasn't growing as much as it, ha it has been but special education continues to grow in our county so okay. thank you patrick okay at that uh, we'll take a vote all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. <coughs> opposed okay i have it item 4.2 for action, administration requests approval to give the Midland County Educational Service Agency approval to move ahead with the purchase of hardware by our internet provider, MCONet, which will enable internet connections to increase beyond the 1.0 uh, gigabytes per second for bandwidth that we currently share as a county. The total cost of the upgrade to hardware is $106,390. $6.36, the MPS portion based on student population is $53,197. Mr. Chair, 
Yeah, like uh, about a year ago, we talked about upgrading the firewall there. It's, it's like anything else, it's our internet provider. And as time goes on, of course, that equipment gets outdated also. And in addition, as you can imagine, not just Midland Public, but all the districts are using more devices. And so they have a real need to increase that bandwidth for us all to be able to access our, our network the, the best we possibly can. Um, that amount, again, is based on our per pupil, our share, if you will, uh, of what we should pay. We're paying it all at one time. Some of the other districts are paying it over time, but we had part of a, a TRIG grant, which you might have heard us talk about here before, but it's the technology grant, readiness grant from the state. And since we had that amount there, we just thought we'd pay our share right now and, and, and have that done as we go. But it's like anything else. It's part of the infrastructure, if you will. Uh, we have to have, and it has to be updated just like everything else does, and we're just getting to that, that point again. This hardware is um, well thought out into the future, so this will, won't be, you won't be back in a short period of time. Um, this will be able to handle significant amount of traffic beyond what we're purchasing on bandwidth. Bandwidth is relatively inexpensive. Uh, the hardware is the expensive part. This is going to last us, um, I think it was a five or six year plan, correct Dave? Yeah, yeah so we're, we're, this hardware will be in here for a while. You just answered my question. Okay, I accept the motion. <coughs> I'll move to uh, pass 4.2. Support. Moved by Jerry, support by Lynn. Uh, is there any discussion? Any discussion? Okay, then we'll move into a vote. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 The last item here, um, Mr. Cooper, did you want to talk about uh, the recommendations um, for the Tyler Technologies? Yes, this is uh, to purchase uh, what we refer to as routing software. Uh, the company's or the uh, product's name is Versatrans. Um, this one also has a uh, module that goes with it that will allow us to work through the internet and, and the web so that parents can access through a secure code information about the transportation. So now when the year starts and we overwhelm everybody with what <laughs> bus and where and what time would I expect it, uh, that would all be information that we could keep in a secured fashion online that parents would have access uh, to get into. So that's another portion <coughs> of it. Um, it updates the routing software that we were, I'm um, gonna say, trying to use um, because the, the current one that we had from a few years back has never functioned quite the way we wished it would. Uh, this uh, company is much more uh, versatile, and depending on what you add for modules, and it could be everything from, you know, if we get to a point technology-wise where there's GPS on our buses, <coughs> um, it can interior work with the communication, meaning the videos we take, uh, communicating on the bus. Um, routes could be printed off, not just on paper like they are now, but they could be on a map if they had uh, tablets or some kind of of computing device on it. We're not going to do that all at one time. Hardest part is building those first routes because um, like anything else, uh, they overlay it on a map of the county, if you will. And um, while that's good, it doesn't know every one way and that you <laughs> can't cut through certain places. Uh, it, it's like a computer does. It sends you some weird places. So um, it takes a while. So now like you'll see, uh, we hope to have the, uh, the online portion ready to go but it could be into next year before you have all the routes there. And at first we'd start just by getting our routes in there, being able to print our directions that way, but it should be a real help on uh, special education routes, which vary from year to year. So you're always rerouting, and they're not like our tried and true routes that you know we n always know the bus is gonna go here, 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 because it's always picking up the equal number of kids. They're always in those neighborhoods. So we think it's a good purchase. We think it comes with good training. Um, we think it's got the most expandability. We did look at quite a few of them out there, and we did visit different places that were using them to, to various levels. So um, we think it's a, a good uh, uh, software to switch over to. So we recommend purchasing it. I, a question. Bob, I may have missed this. Um, did you say this will allow real-time uh, monitoring of where the buses are, and that can be accessed by parents? If we were to go to the GPS module on it, that'd be true. but. It, at least what this will do is, uh, right now, you know, what time is it, it? When you build a route, you put in the expected times to get from one place to the other. Even now, most parents will say, oh, I know I get on this bus, so 
sometimes it's where's that stop going to be right. and about what time it is because nobody wants to be out there for, um, if all you know the start time of your route is 6.10 and you're at the last stop, you just as soon know that's really 6.50. So until we get to the real true interactive GPS, which I think is down the road a little bit, um, we wouldn't have the real time, but it is capable of doing that. Okay. So what you'd see this time is more what we built in the routes with reasonable times based on speed limits, et cetera, that you would expect the bus to be there um, at a certain time. But it, the capabilities are, are pretty amazing. What you were talking about where you'd come on and know the bus is running 10 minutes late because it literally you can yeah. see it on a GPS screen, but that's just the uh, ways down the road. <coughs> okay, thanks. Yep. I'm, I move to, to pass 4.3. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, now is the portion of our meeting where we open it up for requests to the board. Do we have anyone who would like to re make a request to the board? Seeing none, uh, we'll move into administrative services. We had a study committee meeting. Uh, Yvonne, do you have minutes mm -hmm. for that? I do. These minutes are from the April 18th, 2016 Administrative Services Study Committee <coughs> minutes um, where we talked about NEOLA policy updates. At the May 16, 2016 Board of Education meeting, which of course is tonight, Mr. Sherrill will bring for action to the Board of Education policy changes to a number of Midland Public School policies as recommended by NEOLA in our spring 2016 updates. NEOLA retains law firms to provide legal reviews of published materials and consults on policy updates in the spring and fall each year. Therefore, the legal accuracy and compliance of proposed revisions can be unequivocally guaranteed. Mr. Shero and Administrative Services Committee members discussed a number of these board policies that have proposed changes. In addition, the committee briefly discussed the Edgar collection policies as well as administrative guidelines. The policies that will be presented for updates uh, at tonight's meeting will be included in documentation for board members to review before the meeting. And then, of course, the next meeting will be as needed. No set schedule. Okay, very good. And item 6.2, we have the NEOLA Spring 2015 Policy Revision, and I believe we need a vote on this. Correct, we need a vote. And, um, the, the minutes just described what you're doing. Right. It, it's policy updates, our spring policy updates. Um, Yvonne used the word Edgar, and, and that's a technical word for the governmental policies that have to do when we accept uh, federal dollars and state grant dollars on that side of it. So it was a pretty large update this time. Okay. Do we start with the roll call vote or is it the... Nope. No, no roll call needed. Okay. So I'd accept a motion on item 6.2. I'll move we adopt item 6.2. And I'll support that. Not to go into the details of these, Mike, were there any that we can't afford? <laughs> I, keep, I keep worried about, you yeah. know, the gift that keeps on giving, if you want to yeah. call it that. No. No, these really um, <coughs> had nothing to do with financial support. Okay. But mainly were regulations um, that had to do with you accepting gifts from federal yes. yep. suppliers, yep. Um, those type of things going through, some other policy updates. But um, remember, this this Neola group vets this for us, so they do both Michigan and Ohio, um, the, the largest policymaker out there, have attorneys who vet all these changes, and most of them are driven by law changes. Yeah. So they really don't have an option. I mean, we need them to come in compliance with the law. So that's why it's a revision versus new policy. Okay, so we'll move into a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> vote carries unanimously. We'll move into item seven, curriculum instruction <coughs> assessment. Uh, Lynn, you have study committee chair, do you have minutes? I do, I have two. The first one is from April 18th, and we met at East Lawn Elementary School. The first item of business was a STEM strategic plan activity update, and Brian updated the committee on actions completed from December 2015 through April 2016 related to the MPS STEM strategic plan. Topics included the partnerships with Michigan State University and Saginaw Valley State University, summer training, volunteer connections, outdoor STEM spaces, 
staffing plans, community presentations, and administrative duty allocations. And next, um, we talked about the community school model at East Lawn. And Principal Shannon Blazy led a presentation updating the committee on the implementation of the community school model at East Lawn. Data presented showed a significant reduction in truancy and an increase in student achievement accolades since implementation of the program. Plans for, plans for integration of the model into Central Park Elementary were also discussed and we adjourned at 3.15. That was a very interesting uh, presentation uh, and to hear what all they're doing at East Lawn and making these great strides in their school. And today we met this afternoon and um, first we began with the cross analysis indicator report and Mary Lors presented the, we'll call it the CIA report to the group. The MDE is required by the IDEA <laughs> Uh, to make annual determinations for every local district in the state. As part of these determinations, an indicator of timeliness of annual individualized <coughs> education programs is required. Any district with IEPs, and that is individual, educa individual education plans that did not meet mandated timelines are required to complete a cross-analysis indicator to investigate the underlying cause of non-compliance. Each annual IEP must be completed every 364 days pri from the prior annual IEP. The MDE expectation based upon IDEA is 100%. Based upon the Michigan Student Data System, IEPs can have several reasons for being late, which include IEPs occurred on time but were not published by the annual date. And there were five MPS IEPs in 2014-15 that fit in that category. Multiple IEPs <coughs> occurring for one student within, within an MSDS collection period and there were two IEPs in that category. If a student with a disability transfers into the district with an overdue IEP and there were three. <laughs> And the IEP was actually late, and that was not the case for any MPS IEPs. Staff were trained on the importance of holding and publishing IEPs by compliant dates during the May 11th professional development session. And then on to one of our favorite meetings of the year. We um, went out to the Building Trades House and had a tour. And the Kevin Dodick, Building Trades teacher, Bill Brown, City of Midland Building Department Liaison, and Scott Cochran, our Auxiliary Education Curriculum Specialist, discussed the overall Building Trades project and partnership for this year. This year's partnership, similar to previous years, included the City of Midland and the Arc of Midland. The 26 students enrolled in the Building Trades program met the challenge of completing the 2,250 square foot home, the largest in program history, on West Wackerly. Features of the home include a full finished basement complete with physical therapy studio, an oversized two-car garage to allow for a van with wheelchair lift, compliant with Americans with Disabilities Act, handicap accessible, barrier free, zero step, and a lift system on the staircase to transport the owner to and from the basement. In the final weeks of the school year, students will be putting the final touches on the interior and exterior of the home and property. In addition, some of the winning mites projects from the welding and woodworking programs were on display at the house for viewing. MPS has multiple award-winning mites projects this year, one of the most successful years in program history. And this house was absolutely gorgeous and amazing. And we met and talked with several of the students who gave us tours around the house. And um, the, not only is the house amazing, but the program for some of these students, they said was just amazing. There was so much hands-on learning, and um, a couple of them are looking at graduating, and one going into welding at Ferris, another into um, carpentry woodworking, and um, they just said <coughs> they, they enjoy having the experts in the field that also come in and spend some time with them from everything from electrical plumbing, <coughs> masonry, drywalling, and uh, so it was a, just a very fun afternoon. Gary, Pam? 
I enjoyed it immensely. And the thing that uh, I would add to that that surprised, well, was the wonderful uh, piece that right as we were leaving, a uh, neighbor came by and was riding a lawnmower in the back of the property. And the six students know that with us noticed them right away and big smiles. And they said how this neighbor has offered to sell them the piece of property behind, right behind them and offered to mow it for them and keep it out the door for the girl who's gonna live in the home. And I thought, wow, what a great um, mentor, role model, um, nice old gentleman who, who just uh, created a neat relationship with his students. So I thought that was just kind of icing on top of the cake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll pile on. It was very impressive um, having built my own home, et cetera. It, 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 these kids are really getting good at what they do, and they, not just what they do, but learning what other crafts are doing and how to be done and what quality work is and what it takes educationally to be able to do that quality work these days. Uh, so uh, very happy that the math skills is to do stairwells, as Mike and I often talk about. Um, but I'd like to talk about some of the other things. A, a couple of things that um, uh, it's great to see our um, our IEPs, not only on time, but in general, I hear very good things about the quality of them. Mm -hmm. This could be very much a paperwork exercise, and I'm glad it's not. This is really directing what we're doing with kids and getting better and better at it every day, so that's very good. But going back to the East Lawn meeting a month ago, um, we can't say enough about what the community model school is doing for us at East Lawn. Mm -hmm. We just cannot say enough. When you see what's happened to the truancy rates, and I've got to admit, the number one thing you know is if they don't come, you can't help educate them. But you have zero chance of educating if they're not here. And to have the attendance rates go way up and assisting parents and working with parents, uh, at many at, at risk and jobs and odd hours and all this stuff, focus on their kids' education and enabling them to do that by putting community resources into that building. I, I just want our public to hear how critical that is to us and how much it's working. It's really working. It's not just a, a feel-good thing. We got kids coming to school, they're achieving better and better, and we're gonna leverage this to the new school when all is said and done. This is just too important and too good. So hats off to Shannon Blazy and her crew down there. Uh, I can't say enough about what they're doing and how much of a difference 15 years from now that's gonna make in a lot of <coughs> these kids' lives who are now going to school in first and second grade that would have slipped off the wagon who aren't going to because of their efforts. Item 7.3, Brian, did you want to? Yep, yep, that? I'll take that one for you. Um, we bring to you tonight two texts, uh, one for geometry, <coughs> one for geoscience, that have made it through our internal vetting process. Tonight they come to the board for information and for our traditional 28-day period of review. Those texts are located in my office, and we are willing to share them with anyone from the public or from the board that wishes to examine them. Um, the purchase of these books will be contingent upon two items. One, uh, the board's official approval in June, and two, the available funds for that uh, when the budget um, goes through uh, your approval process as well. Very good. Does anyone have any uh, comments on this? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll <coughs> move into item number eight, finance you facilities. We do, <coughs> need to take, we do need to take action oh, on that. we do that. need to take action on that? I Correct. No. Sure Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Item eight: finance, facilities, and operations. We uh, <coughs> have another uh, set of minutes to share from Mr. Kruger. Yep. We met May 9th um, for the bond update. We met at Central Park Elementary. And in addition to the members that were there, we had uh, Shannon Blazy and Mrs. Hockemeyer, and then Daryl Dumbrell from Barton Mallow and Dale Jerome from French Associates joined us. We walked the construction site for a detailed walkthrough of the construction that's taken place. To this point, foundation and site work are underway, and the committee was able to observe the beginning footprint of Central Park Elementary. Mr. Dumbrell from Barton Mallow and Mr. Jerome from French Associates reviewed with the committee the progress and timeline of the current projects. The main focus was on Central Park auditorium renovations. Um, like I say, the tour was impressive to see the how just how big that building is with the you know, with the footing and the footprints are there. It's it's impressive the the time schedule to get that done by next year. Impressive. Um, 
defer the next stage of the meeting, we came back to the administration and discussed finance and operations. Uh, we discussed the following, Mr. Cooper, the March financials. Uh, number two, purchase, purchase and transportation learning software, which we discussed tonight with eLink online routing and planning module. Number three, the MCESA budget. The administration recommends adoption of the resolution expressing support of the budget and the upcoming summer tax resolution. Um, next meeting is Monday, June 6th at 5 o'clock. And some additional dates, um, budget 16-17 presentation and hearing on June 13th. And the 16-17 budget approval and budget final adjustment June 27th. Thank you for that update. <coughs> We move on to item 8.2. Mr. Cooper, do you have that? Yes. Um, just for information tonight, we do have 11 items, uh, total value $9,520.45. Um, it's quite a range. A uh, fair amount of them are from the Jefferson Parent Advisory Committee, the JPAC, or from the H.H. Dow High School All Sports Boosters, but we also have some from Midland Area Community Foundation, Woodcrest Elementary, Michigan Transition Service Associates, uh, individual uh, parent donation, um, and then finally a, a larger one uh, by Northwood University for the Dahai DACA. They do not require your action. As always, at the end of this board meeting, they'll, they'll run on the screen so people can get a full look at, at uh, what those uh, gifts are. Very good. Thank you. Now we're on uh, to item nine, human resources. We have I actually have them right oh, Okay, we had a meeting on Wednesday, May 11th at 4.30 p.m. Uh, with respect to administrator evaluations, we, the district has decided to use school advance as our evaluation tool for administrators as required by law. Training for that's gonna begin August 2016. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, with negotiations, uh, the district has began negotiating the 2016-17 salaries with the Midland Federation of Paraprofessionals. The district <coughs> and the MFP will meet again on June 7th of 2016. Uh, the district and the MCEA are working on two potential letters of agreement. As far as staffing goes, Ms. Marchese gave the committee an update on teacher staffing for the 2016-17 school year. The district posted positions that are known due to the large amount of retirees this year. Uh, Cynthia indicated the staffing will be finalized some point later in May. Uh, as far as the job fair and recruiting goes, the district was successful in recruiting at several teacher job fairs at universities throughout the state and a few out of state. MPS will be hosting its own job fair coming up in, on May 24th, and we are excited to announce that we have over 500 registered teachers that will be meeting with us at events. Mm -hmm. Our next meeting is gonna be Thursday, October 13th, 2016 at 4.30 p.m. I'd like to make one comment. It, it's really gratifying to see the number of applicants we want for these positions. It still tells us from a uh, teacher faculty perspective we're a highly desirable place to be. And uh, with all the stuff we've gone through, it, it, it makes me feel very good that we still are. And as a matter of fact, at the Gerstacker Award Ceremony, it was one of our recipients talked about her experience probably 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It said, something had to be right about Midland Public Schools because I went to a job fair Everybody else milling around, but the Midland line was crazy long. I just remember a quote, crazy long. And it was mm -hmm. so good to know that it's still crazy long. Mm -hmm. So hats off, folks. Absolutely. All right, item 9.2. Um, we have staff members that have announced their retirement. Um, we have a paraprofessional and ESL tutor. And then item 9.3. Under terms of the current contract between the Board of Education and Midland Public Schools and the Midland City Educational Association, a six contract <coughs> lease has been granted to Mr. Mark Hackbarth, president of MCEA, for 2016-17. Uh, we have correspondence uh, to and from the board. Many thank you letters that will go out. Um, and then item 11. Schedule and activities for the remainder uh, of the year. We have Board of Education uh, meetings listed. And our final phase is this uh, 
study the stressing section. Would you like to open it up? Uh, <coughs> start with Patrick. All right. Um, I enjoyed the uh, PYP presentation from the students tonight. Uh, I think both did a wonderful job. Did the bullying presentation takes a certain amount of courage to get up there and, and have your say, but I appreciate uh, her doing that and enjoyable to see. I don't have a bunch tonight. We don't meet again, correct, till after graduation. Is that correct? After yeah. commencement? Yeah. Which means June 5th. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck. Congratulations to all those who have, and parents, who have made the sacrifices and effort. And hopefully we can have a safe ending to the school year here in the next month. <coughs> I'd just like to congratulate our Earth Walker Award winner. It's, it's all, as always, really fun to go and be a part of that. Um, wonderful event and try to get to the teacher of her and, um, and just many accolades to these top-notch teachers and we thank them for all that they do. It was also amazing to look at the list of uh, retirees and many of them were there that, that evening and uh, all the years that they have accumulated as a whole was what, 1,053, something like that, Mike? That's a lot of years. And I looked at a lot of those <laughs> names, and many of them my, my kids had at some point in their uh, MTS years. So uh, we wish them all the best in their retirement. And uh, congratulations to our May Shining Stars, Mary Gill and Prescott. And um, also, I just saw in the paper our uh, Saginaw Valley Ring Scholar Athletes. Um, so there were four students, Pete Middleman Dow and Jason Jahoski and Marty Hollenbeck were awarded the uh, as the teacher winners, so congratulations to them, and it just seems like this time of year it's great. A lot of congratulations going on, and it's hard to believe another year has come and gone, and we'll be uh, sending another group of graduates off. So, <coughs> I'm losing my voice. Uh, Lynn and Pam have adequately covered everything I was going to mention, so uh, I'm going to refrain from um, quickly, uh, again, congratulations to your Specter winners and to our retirees. Uh, I knew many of them too, many of them have my children, and wow, thousands some years of, of teacher experience <laughs> leaving is just incredible. But I'm very hopeful that with our district, uh, we will replace them with very, very good people, which is very good to see, refreshing the pipeline. Um, these students tonight, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, <laughs> those were fifth graders and third graders, are you serious? I mean, I just sat there and went, wow just very impressive what they've learned and how they present themselves. And I saw that at the, the house build today too. These guys were very articulate. They knew exactly what they were doing. They could tell me everything about what was going on and, and were very eager to do so. And not a like or slang word amongst them. Think mm -hmm. about no ums, no, they, they were just very, very good, very articulate, very interesting to see. Um, congratulations to Mark Hathbark. I guess it's like congratulating us for being on the board service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a, a duty of love and Mark, congratulations. We look forward to, to working with you. Um, IB graduation will be coming up and I encourage people to go see that. When you see these projects, these kids have worked mm -hmm. on for their IB, it's just incredible stuff. It's just a whole nother world. And uh, lastly, uh, I plea if anyone's listening to the seniors, make graduation your most happy, memorable moment not your most tragic or saddest memorable moment as you go through this. It's gonna stick with you one way or the other. Let's make sure it's a good one for yourselves and your families. So please take care and be safe out there. Well, this is my kind of board meeting. <laughs> I just love it when the students come to us because we just don't get to see them that often. That's really what it's all about is the students. But as Jerry was saying about their presentations, <laughs> They're awesome. I've sat through a lot of presentations by adults that weren't anywhere near as professional <laughs> as theirs were or as enjoyable or easy to listen to. But I also want to say that I was so gratified to, to hear and see the things that they're learning and not just their academic lessons, but such great life lessons as well. Like learning to like people you don't like so well. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's a great one that will benefit them all their lives. And that one and uh, the one about having a positive um, positive energy to, for learning things you don't care for so much, you know, like math maybe, or <laughs> those are just amazing to me. So it was really, um, I just really enjoyed seeing that a lot, hearing those things. And then I just also want to give my congratulations too to the, our retirees and our graduates, two groups who are moving on to 
the next phase. So I hope everything, I'm just giving my best wishes for great success for the graduates and uh, very happy retirement for our retirees and to thank our retirees too for all everything they've done for MPS. That's it. I won't repeat what was said. I'll just add uh, a few other things that I'm thinking about. Uh, parents, check out summer camp opportunities. There's a lot of awesome STEM opportunities, whether uh, they're here in Midland. I know uh, ESA has some great square one camps and Delta, SDSU, Central Michigan all have great camps for the summer. Uh, and there's a lot of camps that you can find on our uh, MPS website as well. A big congratulations uh, to the Set Seg Board. Uh, Lynn and I usually go down uh, to a presentation to see all the award winners, and it was really nice and personal to see that uh, presentation right here in my own town. So uh, hats off to uh, the teachers there for that 20, 20 minute program. I thought that was really uh, a, a fun way to, to hear about new initiatives and new ways of learning. And that's all I have. Okay, a couple items before we close tonight. Um, assistant principal interviews. We um, are, have gone through three steps on that process at this point in time. So we re originally had over 140 applicants. We had to review, narrow that to 22 uh, applicants who did a electronic presentation to us. And then um, we interviewed, we had a couple drop, 12, 12 applicants um, Friday and Monday. Um, <coughs> interview committee was quite busy. Uh, you can imagine 12 applicants. Mm -hmm. I think they interviewed probably about 10 hours in the last two days. And so um, we finished that today. And tomorrow morning, the principals and I and uh, the agenda team will sit down and um, have a discussion about um, how they were rated. So the interview committee um, recommends to us if somebody was qualified, qualified with reservations or not qualified. And then from there, the principals and us will check that in the final spot will be some callbacks to check on these people as, as we move forward. We have, if you remember, we have four positions open. We have two assistant principal positions at Dow High and then each of our middle school assistant principals. And so we'll probably complete that process this week. So that news will be out soon. Bond update, since we um, uh, went over to Central Park Elementary with our um, FFO committee last week, um, the footings were nearly complete. Well, they are now completed. Um, if you've driven by just from last week to now, you see a wall fully erected over there. I think you haven't noticed mm -hmm. today. And so that's moving along quite nicely. Um, Midland Community Stadium track will be resurfaced and that project is set to go at the end of the month, beginning of June. If you recall, that was pulled ahead a couple years due to the condition of the track where, where we're not able to run events on, on it right now. Um, in the design phase is the secure entrances for our elementaries, renovations and additions at the elementaries are all in the design phase. So they'll be soon bid out as we begin to go forward there. High school technology is in the purchase stage for next year, the one-to-one -one technology for our students at the high school. And this summer we'll also be purchasing two lift buses. So our first two purchases of buses for the fleet are lift buses that are, those two are always conditioned, so they take two at this point in time. We've been a little slow on that purchase schedule, so we've been sitting on that money because it makes money and allows us to do more things or pay our debt off sooner. And so um, we would typically be purchasing a few more buses, but we think we can get away with two at this point in time. And that is all I have for you. Okay, with that, I will close the meeting.